Hello, everybody. I hope everyone can see me. Hello, hello, and welcome everyone to HFC's Caretertainment event. Hold for applause. I'm sure everyone is screaming and clapping. Uh, my name is Caitlin Riley. I am your MC for this afternoon, and I am honored to be one of HFC's celebrity ambassadors. I don't consider myself celebrity, but HFC does, and for that, I am grateful. We are so excited to see you here in social hour and hope you have a chance to connect with each other, maybe take a few selfies in the photo booth. Today is about connecting as caregivers and the power of laughter. Now we all know that comedy and laughter are not necessarily synonymous with Alzheimer's disease and dementia, but our lineup for this afternoon is here to entertain you and maybe leave you with a few new comedy tools to use yourself. I know that I need those. So sit back, grab a snack and enjoy, and let's get started. Uh, I, hope, I hope that everyone heard that. Uh, I really do. And I hope that you guys like this blur situation I got going on. It makes me feel like I'm in space. Okay, so right now I am going to introduce Arlita Hall. Arlita is a Chicago native. I have a lot of love for Chicago. My dad was from Chicago, Southside, much love. Arlita is a filmmaker, comedian, improviser, actress, mixologist, and a certified dementia communication specialist who takes the power of yes to communicate with people who have dementia and Alzheimer's. Arlita was also the primary caregiver for her father, Milton Hall. Arlita combined her dementia raw training and personal caregiving experience to create If Alzheimer's Could Laugh, an introductory workshop that covers using improvisation and positive communication tools to caregive. Let's welcome Arlita, everybody. Hello, how are we doing today? I know we doing great. I could just tell by the way you all are sitting here clapping right now for me. DJ, cut the music off. All right. So I just want to know real quick, how many people in here know what Alzheimer's and dementia is? Oh, I see them hands raising. Yes, yes, yes. We know. We feel it. Oh, ah, yes. All right. So I take care of my daddy that has Alzheimer's, not dementia, because we all know that it's a difference. You know, um, dementia, you may forget where your keys are at. Alzheimer's, you may try to eat them. Okay. It's a difference. So my daddy had Alzheimer's and honestly, I was working at first full time. My daddy got Alzheimer's. So I didn't know what to do. So I quit my job. I just told them I was going into witness protection <laughs> and then I started taking care of my dad. Now I utilize improv to take care of my daddy. That means I agree with everything that he does. The first step in improv is saying yes. And so I, yes. And the shit out of my daddy. Now, my daddy thinks that he's still a principal. So when I get over here in the morning, my daddy is trying to get to work. So he's like, excuse me, what's on the agenda for today? I'm like, well, at 11 o'clock, we're going to have a board meeting. At 12 o'clock, we're going to break for lunch. And then at 1 o'clock, we're going to have a teacher's review. He's like, all right. I'm like, I'll see you in a minute, Principal Hall. And then we walk off, you know. And then once we walk off, it's time to get my daddy into the shower. Now, I could get, get my daddy in the shower, help him to get his clothes off. You know, and even got him to washing up. Now, he'll start washing up and everything be cool until he peeped that man in the mirror. Something about him don't belong now. He be washing up like, hey, get out of here. What are you doing? Get out of here. So I be shooting at the man in the shower. Pop, 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 get out of my daddy's shower. So <laughs> after I shoot up the shower, <laughs> now it's time to sit down and have a cup of coffee. And heaven forbid that the phone ring, you know, because if the phone start ringing, my daddy don't know what a phone is anymore. No. So he answered his coffee cup. Hello, Milton Hall. How are you doing? So I answer my coffee cup on the same side of him. Hello, Milton Hall. Then he look at me. Hello. I'm like, hello. He's like, hello. I'm like, oh, I'm hang up. <laughs> so I thought I hang up the phone. Y'all seem real nice out here. So I guess I could just start being real honest. OK, now. This is some really nice hair I have on, but up under this beautiful wig, I have the same Afro as the mayor of Chicago, Lori Lightfoot. And if y'all know what that is, it's really, really little. It's this real little fro with her eyes be like this. So 90% <laughs> of the time, my daddy think I'm a little boy running around the house. 
So I was walking past him the other day <laughs> and he has this thing where he used to be trying to snatch shoes from everybody. So I took his shoes back. He was like, you're going to mess around and get yourself killed, young man. <laughs> so I got up out of that trial. But now it's time to take my daddy. Before I take my daddy out, as I told y'all before, I improvise and I agree with every single thing that my daddy got going on. But my brother does not. OK, he does not improvise. You know, this uh, disease affects the whole family. So my brother is in denial because you can't necessarily see Alzheimer's like you can see other diseases like affect people physically. You don't really know what's going on. So my brother was like, daddy does not have Alzheimer's. Daddy knows exactly what's going on. See, watch this. Dad, it's me. Look at me right here in the eye. It's me. Do you know who I am, dad? My daddy be like, no, I don't. <laughs> Then my dad, um, he still he would be around my stepmom. And because my dad would go in and out thinking he a principal or whatever, he would be trying, he would think my stepmom was his secretary. So he would ask her for his papers and things that need to be stapled. And then he'll walk behind her and be like, excuse me. And then she'd be like, that's sexual harassment, Mr. Hall. You know, me and her improvising with him. We think it's funny. My brother, like, I think that's ridiculous that he thinks she is a secretary. You know, I, I honestly. That's embarrassing on dad's behalf. I'm like, Melty, just go along with it. He like, no, absolutely not. So then he'd be asking my daddy questions. Dad, do you know what time it is? My dad would be like, I don't know. Do you know what time it is? He dad knows what's going on. <laughs> so I came over here and started taking care of my daddy because Melty can just get it, get it. Okay, y'all. So a part of this disease is wandering. So it's time to take my daddy outside for a walk. Now, um, Caitlin did mention that I am from Chicago and similar to her daddy living on the South side, we from the South side of Chicago. So I'm going to just take y'all to the South side of Chicago. If y'all willing to come with me real quick, virtually on this trip. Thank you so much for y'all coming. So we go outside. Now I'm trying to walk my daddy down the streets. I'm walking my daddy down the street. I take my phone and I'll put it on Snapchat because my brother thinks my dad is a flight risk. Dad does not need to be taken on walks. He'll run away. I'm like, no, he won't. He won't run away with me. I got that. I put out some videos, take pictures, and I put it up. And as we walking down the street, my daddy sees a lady that he believes needs his help. So he starts running towards her and like, ma'am, ma'am, do you need help? So she starts running back like, sir, do you need help? I was like, no, I need help. He is a person with Alzheimer's. He think he needs to help you. Let him help. So she starts walking towards us by the house. So we get by the house. I'm like, I think we good. You can go. So then she fades to black. But we not good. My dad used to be a police officer as well. So he runs up to this empty blue Ford Taurus and starts talking to Detective Ghost. So I'll go on the other side and start talking to Officer Casper. Now I mentioned you really shouldn't be standing over nobody vehicle on the south side of Chicago, okay? Not, not at all. So as we standing over the vehicle, having this friendly, ghostly conversation, the owner of the vehicle starts looking out the window. She's like, hey, get the fuck away from my car. I was like, hey, it's a person with Alzheimer's. This is her car. So we pulled off. We get down the street in her car. So as we up the street, you know, I grab my daddy hands because my daddy's spiritual. So I try to pray with him. I'm like, you know, in the name of Jesus, if you could just remove confusion. My daddy was like, Jesus, Jesus, I'm looking for Jesus. So now he ran down the street. Jesus, Jesus. I'm like, Jesus. He is the person with Alzheimer's. Heal him. So I finally get my daddy back in the house, y'all. True story. So now it's time to take my daddy to the gym. Now, me and my stepmom, I call her my bonus mom, we are a care pair. We both let my daddy do things a little too long with Alzheimer's, but hey, we in this together. Let's go to the gym. So we go to the gym. Now, my daddy can still walk the track. Now, you know, on Mondays and Wednesdays, I'm not sure where y'all from, but on Mondays and Wednesdays, we walk this way. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, we walk this way. But because my daddy had Alzheimer's, he gonna walk whichever way he want to go. And as I'm walking with my daddy, we go, we go during the hours that a lot of senior citizens are at the gym. So they just talking about me. I'm like, he got awesome, he got awesome. They, yeah, 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 but you can be doing better. Keep up with your daddy, baby girl. Go on over there. You're going to mess up. I'm like, whatever. So I take my daddy on a trip. 
Now, he can still walk on the treadmill as long as it's on low mileage, you know. So, we walking on the treadmill. Now, as we walking on the treadmill, my daddy right here, I'm on the other side of him. And we got three people in the back. But three, not just three regular people, three older men that's in the back sitting on judgment row, just judging me and my daddy. So as my daddy on the treadmill, he pulling on a little red emergency stop. So he's constantly wrapping it around. He don't think it belongs there. Nay, you need to watch your daddy. He don't fall off of that. I'm like, oh my goodness. Then the guy on the side, you may as well put 911 on speed down. He going to break something. I can see it now. So I'm, so I'm like, okay, y'all. So then my daddy, um, employee come around and my daddy trying to pay him because for some reason he think he needs to pay him to leave us alone. He, thank you very much. I'm like, oh my goodness, we got to get out of the gym. So we leave the gym, y'all. Let me go to the grocery store. Now, for some reason, I cannot get my daddy out of any stores when we take him in there. All right. Like once we go in the store, he don't want to leave. And because he a principal, if we go inside any store, including the grocery store, he trying to boss everybody around in the store. Don't look like you're young enough to be told what to do and how to stop. He going to him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You need to put that over there. Thank you very much. You, I need you to go over here. You, you need to be running detention. I'm like, daddy, just relax. So I'll walk away for a little bit, let my daddy talk to people. And as I did, we turned around and somebody came up to us, the security, like, I'm so sorry. I heard y'all got mugged in the parking lot. Yo, your daddy told us y'all got mugged in the parking lot. So I'm here over there just going, yes, and they were outside. They took a purse. I'm like, oh, sorry, oh, sorry, oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Finally got my daddy out of the grocery store, y'all. So <laughs> at this time, you know, I'm going to just be honest, like tell y'all the real truth. Like my dad passed away this past February. Yes, true story. Um, I took care of my daddy all the way up until the end. And after he died, we got ourselves, got my, me and my family, we've been in grief therapy and it's been a lot just to take in, but it has been, still been finding my way to laugh about all of this. So as we're going through this whole process, my dad wanted to be cremated. Okay. Now I call the funeral home. I'm like, all right, the, we put, we plan the services. I'm like, all right, we need to get, um, when, when, when are we going to get his ashes? No one's called me to pick them up. They were like, We need to talk to you about that. I was like, okay. They were like, you cannot have the ashes until after the memorial. I was like, why is that? <sighs> Miss, are you sitting? I was like, yeah, I'm sitting. They're like, we need you to know. Cremation is irreversible. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear you. I have to have you say that again. Could you please repeat that? He was like, Miss, cremation is irreversible. So I told him, I've never seen anybody uncook an egg, sir. If you could just have my daddy ready and served up for the memorial, we would gladly appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> No, yeah, but um, in real life, I really did. This is all true. Um, I really did quit my job to come take care of my dad. And in this whole process, I found comedy, found improv that saved my life. Um, so I just we I decided to make a documentary about me and my father. Um, yes, yeah. Um, within this past week, I just got a grant from the city of Chicago. Yes, it's my second grant. And then I just got into another fellowship that I can't tell y'all all the way about, but it's coming up real soon. But if y'all could do me a favor, please, 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 I'm gonna sing it because I know y'all like singing. I'm gonna sing my website, and if y'all could go to and subscribe to it for free and just watch the trailer and rock me so that way y'all be in tune for everything I got coming up. Y'all ready? All right, y'all could go to finding your laughter dot com i'm gonna do it one more time of finding your laughter dot com thank you so much i've been our leader hall thank you hilarity for charity this has been amazing i love this please y'all find a way to laugh for alzheimer's and dementia it's gonna be crazy and it's frightening that's why we gotta find a way to laugh about it so thank you from chicago Yay, Arlita, go to her website, do it. I'm so excited for your documentary. Quote of the day so far is I have never seen somebody unscramble eggs. Uh, I was dying with laughter. That was hilarious. Amazing, amazing, Arlita. All right, next up, 
I am going to introduce Danny Klein Modisette. I hope I'm saying that right. If I'm not, I'm so sorry. Uh, Danny Klein Modisette is a comedian and actor and author of the book, Take My Spouse, Please. Thank you. The thank you is not in the title. I just added that. Um, it's about how to create shared laughter to keep your marriage happy and healthy. After Birth, Stories You Won't Read in Parents Magazine was her first book. Um... Ooh, excuse me. Danny taught stand up at UCLA for 10 years. She has also coached keynote speakers, business leaders, and congressional candidates to use more humor in their communication. Danny is also an actor currently recurring on the show Ghost for Stars. I love that show. So funny. Her writing has appeared in AARP, New York Times, LA Times, Parents Magazine, and many websites. Danny is a graduate of Dartmouth College. Everybody, welcome Danny. Mic on. Can anybody see me? Can you hear me? Honey, can you hear me? Okay, but we can't see me. This should be very challenging. Let's see. Oh my God, I'm here. Hi everyone. Yay. Hello. Hello. All right. I am so delighted to be with you. Thank you, Arlita. I love Arlita. She's so funny all the way from Chicago. Uh, excellent. So I am coming to you from Los Angeles, California, and I'm delighted to be a part of this. And I love caregivers. Uh, my mother was actually uh, diagnosed with Alzheimer's eight years ago, and uh, it was a really interesting experience, as we all know. Uh, I, too, was with her to, to the end. And when you're a comedian, people always say, oh, stand-up comedy, that's so hard. I could never do that. That's the hardest thing. That's the hardest thing. And uh, and then I witnessed caregivers, and I was like, really? Stand-up is hard? Uh, I think maybe... Alzheimer's caregivers. I think maybe that's harder because like stand up, you know, maybe it's an hour. You sleep with a waiter. It's just not as hard as what I witnessed. So that's when I became completely dedicated to bringing laughter and laughter tools to all of you and all of us. Um, I love to talk about like when I first noticed that my mother was having these issues. I had, she was living in New York City and I went back and in the middle of the night, she's like wringing her hands and, oh, God. And I was like, what is it, Mom? What is it? And she said, well, I should have married Van Johnson. And I was like, yeah, Mom, Van Johnson was gay. She said, well, we didn't know that then. So that's just a little taste of my mother. And uh, she was very uh, funny in her own way, even to the very end. Uh, and another thing that I noticed, um, do you guys know about lum luminosity, lumosity? I know I can't see you, but there's like a brain. They're always telling you to work on your brain as a comedian. I mean, as a somebody facing Alzheimer's, you have to work on your brain. And there's this game called Lumosity that used to be advertised all the time. And it used to make me so anxious every time I heard it because I would think, no, shouldn't that be luminosity? Aren't they, they're messing with me. They're making me think I'm forgetting a syllable. But no, it's luminosity should be it. It's making me very crazy. So I did that thing uh, that everyone's told to do, right? You have to stay physically healthy and work out and breathe. We're going to talk about that because I actually came up with a whole bunch of tools to help people. But I love, I was working out a lot and uh, to try to keep mind, body, spirit together. And I was at the gym and you know how like uh, it's LA. So there's like mirrors everywhere. And I, I started to notice that like my neck was like very veiny. I was like, oh God, what's wrong with my neck is very veiny. And you know, I have this really big hair. So it was like my hair was like this dome and my neck was really veiny. And I just thought, oh my God, uh, I look like a penis. I think, I think caring for my mother is turning me into a dickhead. Yes, just a little bit of shtick to kick it off, folks. All right, do I have Nikki with me here? Is Nikki coming to the stage? I can. Hi. 
All right, awesome. So everyone who's participating, please, this we're gonna do a little warm up with you now because we think it's really important to be present and in your body and in your voice. And so we're gonna do that first, also for relaxation and just getting more oxygen. Sometimes taking a deep breath is like the greatest gift you can give yourself. It gives you pause, it gives you patience and just a moment, and it's as easy as taking a breath. So Nikki is gonna lead us in some warm-ups for everybody, and I will do them with you as her visual aid. So take it away, Nikki. If you're willing and able, you can get up out of those seats. And if you can't, it's no problem. We could do all of this while seated. So, oh, wait, wait. Yay! Yay! Thank you for me! I'm here, awesome. Great, great, great. Me and my big hair. So, what do you say, everybody that's able, stand up, and we're just going to get those arms moving? Because moving your arms gets that blood pumping, that oxygen flowing, and that helps to get our imaginations going. And as Arlita so beautifully showed us, imaginations are so important. So let's get going, let's get going. And perhaps Danny, you yeah. can tell me a favorite place you like to walk to. Uh, let's walk to the beach. Fabulous. Okay, everybody, we're walking to the beach, wherever that beach is for you. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, we have arrived. We are at the beach. Close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. Let's get nice and grounded. Let's imagine what that beach is. Are you on sand? Are you barefoot? Do you have flip-flops on? Are there seagulls in the distance? Are there some waves? Maybe people are chatting. Wonderful. Feel the breeze, feel the sun. Maybe it's nighttime. What I ask is that everybody take your arms up to that big, beautiful sky. Get them up in that beach sky. Take a deep inhale. After three, I want you to let go of all your stress and negativity. Let me hear it. One, two, three. Ah. Great, great, great. Get them right back up again, right back up again. Fantastic, fantastic. This time, I want you to think of a happy word, a word that makes you giggle. Maybe it isn't even a giggle. On the exhale, I want you to share it with us. Here we go. One, two, three. Tamales. Bananas. <laughs> great. Great. Get them up one last time. And we know how hard and whatever you do, you can do it. This time, I want you to reach for a goal something you've been reaching for, striving for, maybe it's for your family or for yourself. On the exhale, I want you to say, we got this. Here we go. One, two, three. We, we got this. Because we do. We all do. Wonderful. Now, let's gently roll out our necks. Always important to do throughout the day. Staying loose. Always listening to your bodies. Wonderful. Some days we're looser than others, and that's okay. Maybe we get in our shoulders. Wonderful, wonderful. We're getting loose up top. Oh, Danny, everybody else, take a look to the right of you. That's right, everybody. It's a hula hoop. That's right, everybody. Grab that hula hoop and hula that body through that hula hoop. We're getting loose here. Maybe we get in our hair and we're shampooing our hair and we're hula hooping, we're hula hooping. The hula hoop is to the hips, to the thighs, to the knees, to the ankles. Boom, we kick off that hula hoop. We don't need it anymore. But let's give our fingers and our face some energy. We can get real close to that camera. We're gonna pretend we're a bunch of chipmunks at the beach, we're at the beach and we're crawling up a sand dune. Let's go chipmunks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Really move those faces. Wah, wah. Staying nice and loose, wonderful. We're gonna take our fingers. We're gonna put them on our bellies, on our stomachs. Our voices are very important to communicate and connect. So let's get in our deep diaphragm voices here. How about we say, 
Hello, everybody. Here we go. One, two, three. Hello, Hello everybody. everybody. Wonderful, wonderful. Take those same warmed up, energized fingers or claws and let's put them on our chest. Fantastic. Let's get in our chest voice here. And right now, I want you to imitate your favorite bird. Perhaps it was that seagull at the beach. Let me hear it, everybody. Great, great. Okay, now, if you're already seated, great. If you're not, please find your way back to your chairs and we can massage out our faces. Great. Again, keeping loose in our face, we hold a lot of tension in our forehead. So don't neglect your forehead. Wonderful, wonderful. And behind your ears, always a nice thing to do throughout the day just to release some of that pressure. Great. Let's stay loose in our mouths. Let's chew up. Let's chew down. And something really important to warm up is our tongues. And we do this with the tongue twister. Tongue twisters are great to help with memory and pronunciation. And maybe you could take your mute buttons off. This is a really short one, so I'll be able to say it. It's she sees cheese. She sees she, cheese. Yes, yeah, so we are going to say that five times as fast as you can. And take your mute buttons off. I'm going to use my fingers. And again, it's she sees Cheese. Here we go. One, two, three. Cheese. That's that's so wonderful. Doing it all together is a really great reminder of being spontaneous and in the moment. So thank you so much for turning your mute buttons off and jumping in. Danny, we know these wonderful humans are warmed up. Awesome. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, everyone, for jumping in. So, yeah, as Arlita said, you know, there's no arguing. You want to leave, ah, you want to speak. You want to use your imagination whenever possible. Uh, there's a great book called Creative Care by Ann Basting. Just a little tip. And she talks about instead of using the memory and relying on memory to actually use people's imagination to engage. So one of the best examples that she gives is you can ask if your foot could talk, what would it say? So that's a great, any body part or any time that you can go into the imagination rather than asking for a, a memory, that's a great tool. And just some other tools that I just wanna run by quickly. So a great one is letting go of the moment before. So this is a comedian's tool. Obviously, if you're doing stand-up, uh, you don't. You have a joke that doesn't work. You can't be like, "Oh, I'm going to go cry in the bathroom." You have to get on to the next joke and stay open to it. And it's the same thing that I noticed uh, with taking care of my mother. Is I will sit with her, and she would seem like really, and um, and I think, "Oh, what did I do? What did I do?" And then I turn away and I turn back, and she's like laughing with someone else. So it's such an important uh, reminder to just keep letting go of uh, the moment before. Just keep let like let it go and move on and keeping a beginner's mind and staying open to the next moment as hard as it is. It's why we want to breathe. And uh, meditation is great. I'm sure that, that they've had workshops and they continue to have workshops at HFC for meditation because it's such a great reminder of how do we let go of the moment, let go of the moment to stay present. Uh, another one that I love to talk about is appreciation, you know, and taking the time to appreciate the people who help you and appreciate the person that you're caring for. It's an interesting thing. If you focus on the positive, even when it's like, oh, when you feel like you have no more patience, uh, you can, in the quiet moments, just find one thing to say that you appreciate about the person. It's a great way to fill silence. You know, I appreciate this opportunity to care for you. It's a great way to calm yourself down and stay in the moment. And the hardest one for people is appreciating appreciation of self. So what I love to do, which we can you can do after me here, is to write a letter to yourself 
dear me, what I love about you is, and that is a great one uh, that you can hang on your refrigerator and hang, <laughs> hang near you so that you always have that. So in the few minutes that we have left together, as uh, Arlita said, she mentioned yes and and improv and the yes and, and that is such, it, it is such an amazing tool for dealing with people in cognitive decline because there's no point in arguing. So what I'd love to do, see if we can do it, is uh, get five volunteers. And um, if they can't come on stage, then maybe you could just unmute and we're gonna try a little yes and game. Is that something that we think that we can do? Can we have five people unmute? Maybe, no, maybe, no. Let's see, oh, I see people unmuting. Yes and. All right, so why don't we take, the, take this few minutes to do a yes and game where we build a spa together? Because I think we could also all use a spa. So we'll do, uh, Nikki, do you, uh, I will send it to you and then we'll see um, who's in the room and able to speak to us. How does that sound? I see one person. Um, okay, let me think on my feet. Let me improvise here since it's so such a great tool to improvise. How about, oh wait, we have some people coming. Hey, look at that. I'm echoing, but so what? Does anyone else hear the echo? Yeah? Just a little. Okay. All right. So the way this goes is you're going to start every sentence and every contribution with the words yes and, right? So we're going to have this amazing spa. I step up. There's thick oak doors. I open the doors, <sighs> greeted by the smell of eucalyptus. Ah. Nikki, do you want to go next? Okay. Melinda, would you like to go next? Yes. And can you unmute yourself? I'm unmuted. Excellent. Excellent. So Hello. can you yes can you and what I just said? said? Yes, and I hear soothing music. Excellent. Okay. okay. How about who is Tor Tori? Terry. Tori. Tori. <laughs> okay. Yes, and it occurred to me. I left my wallet in my car. <laughs> okay, McKeeds. Yes, and my car had been towed away. Ooh, now we're telling a story and having a salon. Okay, uh, yes, and uh, I fortunately know someone at the tow place, so I got my car back and uh, was able to drive to the beach. Melinda? Yes, and there were about 50 young, shirtless, hot men there. Excellent. Excellent. Terry? Uh-oh, that's going to get me in trouble. <laughs> yes, and one gentleman in particular, stuck out. He had red hair, freckles, and a smile that reached his eyes. Ooh, such poetry in this room. McKees. Yes, and I didn't hear anything Tori said. However, if the shirtless men are on the beach, I took off my bathing suit. Okay, and I'm going to say yes, and we started a nudist colony, and we didn't even know we were going to do that. So, excellent. How about a hand for everybody? Hilarious, hilarious. Thank you for participating. Okay, so uh, that is a great example. Thank you for everybody who threw themselves in. You can see how when you just run with your imagination, what you're able to create with very little, and freeing yourself, to just follow an impulse and a thought 
it's a wonderful gift to whoever you're working with to just let yourself be free and silly. And I know with Nikki, we did the warming up the face, which might seem kind of silly. Uh, however, what's great about it is I know in my, in my own experience with my mother, when she didn't even have language anymore, I could make a face and, um, and she would make the face back and we would have a connection. So that's just something to free yourself to be able to do that and to be silly as we were silly because you can make a human connection with your body and your voice and it doesn't have to make sense. It just has to touch their heart. So I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much. Thank you to the people who participated. Thank you for having us. We love HFC and uh, let's bring on the next funny lady. Thank you. You can reach us at laughteroncall.com. I forgot to say that. Please reach us at laughteroncall.com. We do one-on-one -on -one work. We do group training. We do interactive storytelling, whatever your laughter needs. Thank you. All right. Is Caitlin coming back? Hello. Hello. Now I will sing. There she is. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you so much, Danny. And thank you, Nikki, as well. That was so incredibly helpful. And now I'm I'm getting rid of the blur filter. This is my home. So we're we're friends. That's my kitchen. And we're all best friends here, and it's fine. That was amazing. Thank you guys so much for our last set. I am pleased to introduce Jay Smiles. Now, Janae J. Smiles Smith is an engineer, a designer, a lawyer, a caregiver, and comedian, purpose to improve to improve others' lives. Janae's world collapsed when her father's abrupt death thrust her mom into early onset Alzheimer's. She halted everything, choosing caregiving. Comedy entered and bridged the chasm of calamity and humor eased caregiving stress. Jay Smiles, the conscious comic, has performed in the Bahamas, Italy, South Korea, and throughout the USA. Parenting Up, Caregiver's Adventures with Comedian Jay Smiles is a podcast that merges hardship and humor. The Montgomery, Alabama native graduated from Howard, Stanford, and Cumberland. Everyone welcome Miss Jay Smiles. Hello, everyone. This has been fantastic already. I've been over here stretching and laughing. Hopefully, <laughs> I still have enough voice. So uh, do something to let me know. Throw up or something. Y'all can hear me. Okay, great. Listen, caregiving is a little bit trippy. Let me. I'm going to share right now the things that uh, the ladies who went before me was so fantastic. I was like, oh, let me scratch that out of my set. They already hit it. Uh, like uh, our leader, I dropped everything and jumped into caregiving and comedy also saved my life. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what pisses me off though to other people, all right? So, cause we all caregivers and uh, like Caitlin said, we're family here. It's kind of a semi-closed set here. I get a little, uh, on edge when people compare having an LO, a loved one with Alzheimer's is like having a kid. Do y'all get that? They're like, oh yeah, it's like just it's the same as having a little two-year-old or three-year-old, Jay Smiles, you know, is it and I'm like, the hell it ain't. Uh, the hell it ain't. I got a couple of reasons why it's not. But first of all, okay, I'm single. And without a kid on purpose, I never wanted to have a child, okay? I tried really hard to keep this thing empty. Only thing I ever put in here was pizza, hot dogs, and birth control. Okay, Holly, if you hear me, Roe v. Wade for life. That's where I stand, all right? Now, my mama had me. I didn't have her. How that, how did we, I mean, I'm just saying, okay? And incontinence, okay? A little bitty baby, whether you had the baby out your stomach or you adopted the baby or picked them up at the firehouse, the point is that incontinence ain't the same, okay? A two-month-old poo-poo, it is not what my mama makes, okay? They little poo-poo is in here, 
right here in the palm of my hand. It's cute. You go, oh, look the baby, look the put the put the. You talking to the kid? Put the put the. You are kissing their toes as you wipe. One little tissue. One little tissue. You could cut it in half. Wipe the whole butt and the little hoo ha. Okay. Shout out to the caregivers whose LO is now incontinent or used to be incontinent. Did this do it? I don't think it did. <laughs> this does not help you clean nothing on them. Okay? That ain't the same. And you don't get no party. Okay? When your LO has to come live with you or goes to the nursing home or assisted living, don't nobody give you no party. Right? When you get a kid, there's a baby shower. Everybody come over to the house. They dropping off little gifts. They giving you books. They're telling you, I just want to show you just the, these are the things I learned. Right? Pampers, Simulac, milk. They giving you strollers and the little baby Bjorns. Didn't nobody give me no hospital articulating bed. Nobody ain't give me no walker and wheelchair. Did y'all get one? Where the gifts at? Since it's the same as having a kid. I didn't come home with no sign in the yard. <laughs> Welcome home, Jay Smiles and Zeddy. <laughs> Welcome home from the hospital with your brand new five foot, 175 pound baby. <laughs> I ain't get that. So all I'm saying is I don't like that reference. And I'm going to tell you what really gets me. Usually, not all the time, but usually when you have a baby, you got to make the baby. All right. I don't know if some of y'all might have your grandkids around, but you get to make the baby. I didn't get to make the LO. Okay. You know, it's some kissing and some hand holding and some body parts touching. I didn't touch nothing. On nobody's body. I grabbed my mom's hand and walked up out the hospital when they told me your mama has Alzheimer's and she can't do nothing for herself. Welcome to parenthood. Uh, hello? <laughs> Where they do that at? I didn't sign up for this. I'm sorry. Uh, y'all serious? They're like, yeah, the nurse was like, yeah, I'm off shift. She yours now. Okay, give me my mama, but what? That ain't funny. And then when they come at us, this is a little bit of caregivers, let's laugh, right? Because grief is stressful, okay? The grieving that we're doing right now in this world, okay? The war, the Ukraine, I'm not going to get into my position on politics, but the war, Russia, the Ukraine, what happened in Texas, what happened in New York, I'm... I crafted a little more of this set to just say, let's just laugh and let's laugh really hard because as caregivers, we're stressed out every five minutes. Remember the, um, the Army had the, back in the day, the Army had the commercial that said, we do more by 8 a.m. than most people do all day. Caregivers, we do more every hour than everybody else does all week. That's what I say. And, and you know, fight me. Tell them come fight me if they don't agree. That's what I say. And all of these therapists and doctors and PCPs and all of our other family members who don't really want to be caregivers, but then they want to vote on how we living and what we doing with the money. Ooh, 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 ooh. Tell us about self-care. Tell us, let me get this mic out there stand. Tell us how we supposed to take care of ourselves so we don't die before our LO. As if that's our goal. Let me tell you something. So my doctor told me, Jay Smiles, you got to take a little better care of yourself. You gain a little weight. You need to cut out snacking. So I did. Now I just open up the bag and eat the whole bag of chips. Snacking is for losers. Eat up all them legs. You can't just eat just one. It's COVID. Calories don't count. I'm from the deep south. Meat is a side dish. I'm a food -itarian. If it's food, I'm a tearing into it. Where the food at? Where the plate? And yoga. They want me to do yoga to calm my little nerves. My mama got Alzheimer's. 
my nerves ain't going to be calm. Are you kidding me? Do you know about what this thing is when your LO live with you? I said, listen, yoga. Yoga ain't nothing but twister for adults, okay? You give me a thin mat and you put it on the floor, that's a pallet. Where I'm from, it's nappy time. I'm going to sleep. I'm a caregiver. I've been sleep deprived since that girl came home with me. <laughs> Get out of here. My down dog is a couch cow. Okay? Holly, if you hit me. I'm finger snapping myself on that one. That's how I feel about it. Get out of here. All my kindergarten teachers, y'all know how it go down. You just cover yourself up with a little piece of anything you find. Anybody else get on the couch and cover themselves with the back couch pillows? Too tired to even go get a blanket. I just be looking around. Where are the pillows on the couch? I'm just if I could just cover my ankles with the couch pillow, I'll be fine. And meditation. They're like, oh, you should meditate. That's fine. I'm gonna meditate. They say, well, just get the calm out. Everybody got the calm out. They got LeBron James, everybody on there. They messed around and let me hear that Matthew McConaughey. He's some kind of fine. That's what I call white boy fine right there. I bring him home to my mama. She'll be all right. She'll be all right. I said, listen here, Matthew McConaughey, that's, what I, that's a Hollywood hunk for me. I'm calm, all right. <laughs> I'm calmly slipping from that meditation app over to a dating app. <laughs> Matthew McConaughey got me at two o'clock in the morning switching over to Bumble and eHarmony. Y'all, I fooled around. I was on J Date. That's the Jewish dating app. I'm like, listen, I'm like, yeah. who gonna calm down when you listen to that fine man trying to put you to sleep? Get out of here. If Tiffany Haddish can say she Jewish, I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, since the pandemic, I've been doing a lot of virtual comedy because it's safe. It's safe for my mama, right? It means that I don't have to worry about exposing her to the virus because she lives with me. I've been her full-time caregiver for 10 years now. Uh, and because I'm here more than the traveling I was doing previously for comedy in my other business ventures, I've been watching a lot more of these commercials, y'all. The pins are discriminatory. Did y'all know that? I don't want to say racist, because then that kind of lets other people come off. Um, the totem pole of what racists really are. So I'm gonna just say discriminatory. They always talking about on the, how they adding all this extra padding in the pocket. Between the legs, cause to catch all the urine. Hmm. I don't know about that. Okay. Because listen, black people, our bladders aren't bigger. Okay. It's gravity. The urine is gonna go down. It's not our bladder. It's our butts. It's where that thigh <laughs> hit. The bootie, that angle, that's where we have the leakage. Y'all, I went and got bought these extra thick depends. My mama woke up in a puddle. <laughs> Flopping around like a seal with a broke wing. Flapping around with a seal with a broke ring. I got had to get the baby floaties. Y'all know she can't swim. She from Montgomery, Alabama in the 50s. She couldn't go swim nowhere. It was segregated. <laughs> she woke up. She's like, what, JG? I had a scuba mask trying to get to her to clean her up. It's a mess. Adult diapers are trash. And if we really want to be good, how come the way we always making all these cute toys for kids, how come we can't have adult diapers like with an added benefit for men, right? So like when it gets, when it's at that time, maybe when the gentleman has a little excitement down there, it changes colors. It turns blue when it's ready for him to hug up with his loved one. Oh, Sheila, 
It's happening, right? The kids get all the fun. That's what I'm trying to say. The kids get all the fun. I think we should have apple bottom depends for people of color, right? Everybody out here getting them BBLs or whatever, they getting the extra the butt, like the Kim Kardashian and all of that. My mama got the BBL, born with that butt. <laughs> so we need, we need to we need it to spread around. Yeah, that's it. Um, I think that's about my time. I have had the greatest pleasure uh, being here with you all. I it is my pleasure to also care for my mom. I have a podcast, Parenting Up. If you, parentingup.com, you can hear the podcast. We are now all over the world. Thanks to the partnership with people like HFC, I tell comedic stories about my mom and how we get through this thing. I've been doing it for 10 years with her now. Uh, I'm also a comedian. I tour all over the United States, and I have um, – virtual option so you can go to uh j smiles comedy single letter j smiles comedy.com hopefully i'll be in your city but if not uh you can if you go to that website it connects to all my social media it has been a pleasure and the point is you don't have to be a comedian to make your lo laugh or to have fun yourself like the other lady said just go along with your LO in the joke. Whatever world they create, just follow them. It's like having your best nursery rhyme. You get to create whatever kind of imaginary world you want to. Have a great day. Jay Smiles. That was, first of all, hilarious. Second of all, so helpful. I, I love how all of this applies to caregiving. I mean, there's just such a strong through line and this has been so much fun. I wanted to um, give a rousing round of applause to all of these funny ladies. It's ladies day today. Uh, I think we all feel a little better after some belly laughs. I know I do. Uh, I would like to welcome Arlita, Danny, and Jay back to the main stage uh, for the backstage pass portion of the show. We invite all of you to either submit questions in the chat box or in the upper right corner of your screen, or you can raise your hand to be unmuted and ask your question directly to our comedians and myself. Maybe not. I don't know. I just threw that in there. <laughs> so hello, everybody. Everyone was so fantastic. I did nothing. I'm just sitting on my living room floor. Um, but if anyone has any questions, we'll try and um, find those or figure out where we are. Apparently, um, we had a question in during ours, but I didn't capture it. Oh, let's see. Hold on, I had a timer. Hi, Lita. Hi, Danny. I was trying to hold back, but hi, Danny. <laughs> it's so good to see you and play with you. You know that. <laughs> if anyone has any time. questions hey, or or hey, comments, Lita. hey, Danny, your hand. Hey, Caitlin. Again. Hi, Caitlin. Hi. Yeah, or we can just get to know each other. Well, uh, you know what? I didn't talk about timing. And I think as comedians, timing is so valuable, right? And as a caregiver, it's also so important. Like when throughout the day you do things, like there's the macro timing of like, when do you take the keys away? When do you move them? All of that. But then there's like the daily micro timing of like, when's the best time to bathe? <laughs> Never. But nevertheless, you got to get it done. So that I just had a thought about that. But it looks like we had a question come in. Did we? Did we? It was just a thank you, which is the Yes. Yes.
Thank you. We appreciate you. You're very welcome. Thank you for joining. Yes. All right. Yeah. If anyone has any questions or just if you guys just want to comment on how amazing these ladies are, I'm sure they would uh -huh. love to hear that. Because I know that I do. Um, yes. Well, definitely um, a recap, a little mini recap is that all of us talked about yes and, you know, about not arguing and not trying to correct someone in cognitive decline, but just to go with it, just to help your own frustration, to minimize your own frustration, just to, we literally all said, I think, yes and. Um, so that's one tool for sure. Right. Um, I would also suggest um, one, one thing I've done the most out, like including yes and is I talk about it um, a lot. Like this was my art form. This was the way I was going to get it out. Um, and I'm sorry to hear that your loved one is in their late stages. Um, I just lost my dad. So um, it was hard. But I will say a lot. Um, personally, therapy helped me being able to talk to it um, to someone uh, about how I was really feeling because it was real frustrating. And then um, also I used to record, I know this sounds crazy, but videos of myself being mad as hell about caregiving because that shit is so hard. And you know, when I want to say it in front of my daddy, but I'm like, damn, this show was hard today. Why did I have to pick that up? Like Jay Smiles, I think you said it, comparing uh, caring for a loved one to a child. Like my friends will say that like, it's kind of like a baby, but yours is way harder. I'm like, right, don't nobody want to watch my 74 year old. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, don't nobody want to pick him up. And this is real lumps of boo boo. You know what I mean? So I would say to you, um, it is as hard as it's going to get. Find those moments when you smile. Don't feel bad about smiling about them. Um, agree, like we say, yes and. Um, and I know that sounds crazy to say, but like, let's go on along with that. Um, for, for me, that's what really helped and my why. I just wanted to take care of my daddy. The reason I did it was to make sure that he laughed up until the day he died. Like, so that was my whole thing for doing. Like, if I can make him laugh a little bit and make myself laugh, I'd be all right. So I would just say, hold and say your why. And then just holding on to you, whatever you could do to make yourself feel better in your own moments of self-care. Um, I heard uh, Danny bringing a meditation and Jay Smiles just being like, keep it real. Like, I I love Josette Jay Smiles so much. And I'm just, I'm so happy they sent a record now because it was so, is what I dealt with. And, and kind of like you just said, when you came in, like you were late, but you want to hear somebody saying how you really feel and what's real. So I just wanted to say that. And I'm, I'm done. Sorry. And, and I want to, in full transparency, I, in the for the state of comedy i made the jokes about my frustration i absolutely meditate every day uh -huh. i do yoga as much as i can i bike right. i um i swim yeah. i anything i can i do scuba diving i i try i try everything to relieve stress comedy absolutely saved my life like uh Kaylin described in my um in my bio that i had the comedy is my fourth career, three previous degrees, and I worked in corporate America and utilized all of those. I was enjoying that life. My father had an abrupt heart attack that catapulted my mom into early onset Alzheimer's at 61 and a half. 
So I didn't see it coming. I didn't have the um, the the natural progression of oh she I think she's losing it. I think I think she she got lost and she can't pay her bills. Somebody told me at church she walked into the wrong bathroom. I didn't get those cues. I had 90 days to figure out if my mom was having a nervous breakdown or if she had cancer or was it a heart attack? And I found out it was two forms of dementia. So what uh, an additional thing that I have found that helps me is that whoever might assist me with sitting with my mom, whether it's a hired caregiver, a family member or a friend, I give them very specific instructions because what I found out early on is if they manage her very differently from the way I do, it could take me hours or even a whole day to get her back on track. So that's something else I would suggest to people. If like my mom, I don't let her watch the news or law and order or anything like that because it creates a reality, an alternate reality for her. Then she's worried that somebody really died or it, she, if she if she had seen the shooting in Texas, she's going to think somebody that we love in Texas was murdered because we have family in Texas. And I wouldn't be able to explain to her that didn't happen. So in any case, that's my extra to say, whatever your rules are, make sure that the people who are helping you follow those. OK, no news. Yes. And don't ever tell her no. That's normally what I tell people who are coming to watch because they can't keep up with so many rules. I say, just don't ever say no, yep. no matter what. Just say, okay, yeah. When Janae gets back, when Jay gets back, yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, just don't say no because if you say no, you're going to piss her off. You don't yeah. Um. That's so true. I think what you know what you're talking about is about setting boundaries for your for your own self care. And I think the other really important piece, which is why we're all here, is that to the woman who just spoke, like find a community of people you can tell the truth, like you can really speak what's going on, and that they won't run away. You know, um, I always talk about my father died of cancer, and it was ugly and miserable, but people were there like the day before he died. And then when my mother was diagnosed with this, within six months, most people had disappeared. So you want to definitely find communities like this, where you can reach out, tell the truth, have people nod their heads while you talk. Like it's really, really important and valuable to do this. So good for you. Even if you came in late, you came, you know, and you have the connection now. I believe that uh, Melissa has a question um, that I would like to invite her to ask us. Mm. Mm. Well, um, mm. You said this is your husband, correct? Yeah. Yes. Um, um, for um for my stepmom and my dad, when my dad got diagnosed with it, um, 
my stepmom, they she had just got done taking care of her mom with Alzheimer's with my dad. And then like my dad got Alzheimer's. So they was like, whoa. Um That's so I'm not sure. To me as well. Yeah. So like I'm not sure if this helps, but one thing she did was she looked was like, Oh, this was happening again. Okay. I'm not telling him. So we never really told my daddy he had Alzheimer's until I started taking care of him. Um, she partied with my daddy until he couldn't do stuff anymore. Like she tried to do everything that they could still do. Cause even when they first get diagnosed, you know, they, they could still, re we, we watching them forget. So I used to count everything that my dad could still do. If that makes sense. Like I'd be looking at him like, Oh, he could do this, 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 and this in a day. Um, so looking at what he can still do and trying to find ways to enjoy those things with him because what's diminished and hurt so bad, you know what I mean? So all we really have is what they have left. So I watched him and my dad party a little too long. <laughs> a little too hard <laughs> um to the point he was so used to a party he told me one day yeah they're having a party the neighbors are having a party downstairs in the basement i was like ain't nobody having it. and i ain't telling that i was like for real i'm going down the basement you know but i mean um outside of that i would just say it's because it's so heartbreaking to um i watched them just kind of have fun with it until he couldn't do those things anymore if that makes sense. Like they went even out of town. I watched them go out of town too long. I watched my daddy lose stuff out of town. I know where he was going, but I watched her hold on to him as her um husband into the last day. Like I watched her cuddle up until my daddy when he was in hospice. I was like, we got to put him in the hospice bed. She like, but I just want to hold a little bit longer. So um, it, hel it helped him and it helped her to, to, to kind of have him. And even though he had Alzheimer's and he was forgetting, he still treated her like she, he was his wife to a certain degree. Didn't always remember her name. Didn't always address her. Didn't always know what she was doing. But he was only going to let me wash him up. He was only going to let me do certain things. And then he would still walk up to her up until two weeks before he died and maybe kiss on the forehead. So I'm just saying, don't count yourself out um, because they still kind of hold to the people that take care of them. I don't care what the disease say, no matter where it's at on them. They, they going to hold you some way when they know you that person looking out for them. So um, I just I just ask my heart goes out to you. Um, and I just wanted to share that with you to, you know, count what he still got, because it's it's easy to look at what's leaving, but count what he can do. If mm. that helps. Hmm. And also HFC does offer free online support. I saw that, too. Yeah. In the corner. I, I would like to add, I don't know, there are a lot of organizations that have very specific like subgroups. I've never been married, so I'm, I don't want to give you specific advice. But through my podcast, I've had people reach out to me with very specific needs. And so then I end up hearing about organizations. So I would suggest, of course, start off with HFC offline. Uh, I know Alex is on here, and but if you just email them once you go to uh, their website, they'll assist you. But if you were to say, um, you know, very spouse of early onset Alzheimer's sufferer or diagnosis, I would imagine that whether it is a social media closed group, uh, whether it's on, you know, Meta now, old Facebook or something like that, where they have said, you know, you're going to have to meet. I wouldn't know about it because I wouldn't meet their criteria um, or other Alzheimer's groups that may be international. I found a lot of things out of France and Canada that meet me, but aren't even based in the United States. But I've gotten very good support from them. So mm -hmm. um my stomach is hurting for you right now, honey. Literally, my I I got like a sour stomach mm -hmm. because of the pain that I feel from what you shared. So, mm -hmm. um, like our leader said, they know you way longer than medicine believes they know us. I'll mm -hmm. put it like that. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely true. I would say. Do you have anything to add, Danny? I didn't want to step on anyone's toes here. You know, courage. Right. Like you got to find it's finding the courage. It's putting in the support systems that give you the courage. And I loved what Arlita said about taking in, not dismissing what's there because the focus is on what's missing. 
And that was something that really surprised like a lot of my mother's friends. And I know it's a completely different relationship, but the fact that I was able to still find joy, like all her friends from New York were like, what are you doing? You're crazy, yeah. you know? But um, I didn't care. And I think, you know, as I said, like you can, you will be able to continue to connect. It's just not going to look like it used to look. So again, it, it harkens back to that whole idea of letting go. It's not just the moment, it's letting go. Ugh. Well, we're all just letting go, you know, and then some of us get tested more than others. And so that's, I think, any kind of discipline that you can incorporate to self-care, self-care, self-care meditation, yoga, letting go, anything that's going to, eating well, you know, care, sleeping. Like these are the things that um, will go the test of time, you know, will take you through and people who are, who can show up. Yeah. I think just to add here, there's a lot to say for letting go and accepting. I, my father passed January of uh, 2021 to Alzheimer's and we recently found out that my mother now has dementia and it's pretty advanced. So it has been a back to back ride. I'm severely traumatized, but the thing that is helping me more so this round, since it's round two for me is acceptance and letting go and approaching the situation as is not catastrophizing and just having my patience in the now and not correcting and really just enjoying my time with her and pivoting in the situation when I need to. And that has made a world of difference for me. Um, so that's helped me a lot because yeah. I'm currently dealing with it right now. We I have yeah. a question coming through, but I wanted to hear what Daniel Okay, said. I just want to add one thing to that. Because when I first said, and I'm sure the rest of the women here, when I first was doing comedy and laughter and laughter and Alzheimer's, it's not funny, it's not funny. Here's the thing. It's sad. It's super, super sad. Nobody's going to deny that. But it is not sad every single moment. Right. So what we're trying to do is stay open to those moments, to be able to capture those moments that aren't sad, that are beautiful in a way that you would never have anticipated. So that's that's my uh, passion speech. <laughs> I, I believe we have one more question coming through um, and then we will have to wrap up here. This is a question from Kitty, a question for all. She says, I do a podcast on becoming a parent to your parent. Is there anything you feel like needs to be talked about more publicly to support caregivers? I don't know if Kitty's still here, if maybe she wants to speak herself um, and read, uh, or I, I just I just did the work. Um, and then the second part of the question is, what do you, what do you wish people knew? So hmm. I need to repeat that, I can. <laughs> I feel like I butchered that question. Um, question is, is there anything you feel like needs to be talked about more publicly to support caregivers? What do you wish people knew? Good. You said, you know, self-care, self-care, self-care that through the process, because there's actually a study done out of Harvard that when people are in cognitive decline and they're cared for by depressed people, they're, they decline 10% more quickly being cared for by depressed people. So if you don't think you can care for yourself because it's selfish, it's not selfish. You're actually helping the situation. I agree. Yeah, we, my, my mother was, uh, my mother and I were primary caregivers for my father and it was really difficult on her. She suffers from depression and anxiety. So there were times where we really had to force her, like, go away, go somewhere for a couple of days. We're with him. It's fine. So taking that time for yourself, um, just being gracious, like allow your, like, it's okay to be angry. It's okay to be frustrated. Um, don't beat yourself up when you have a day where you don't have a lot of patience. Like you need to have a lot more grace for yourself in this situation and in this time now more than ever. Like you really need to just be your own champion because there's no, like the perfect caregiver does not exist. I feel like that's another thing. There's no, there's no way to do this perfectly. And if you go to bed feeling guilty about something, stop it. Um, so that's what I would say. What about you ladies? 
the thing that um, I, first and foremost, I agree with everything <laughs> that the other are, are we panelists? I don't know what we are called. The, yes, uh, I think we're uh, caregiver <laughs> comedians. That's what I'm calling. <laughs> the other caretainers have said, and um, I want that to be underscored 18 million gazillion times. The thing that I have struggled with the most that I believe the general public doesn't understand about caregivers is that we are effing never off, never off, never off, never off. If your LO is alive, I don't care if they are in a home or mm. in a facility in another state. We are always on call. If mm. you are a caregiver, you have this thing in your head. You could be on vacation. You could be in another state, another country. But at any moment, you could get a call that they are wandering, they fail, they're in the hospital, you know, and that's, there's an anxiety that exists. Low grade, high grade, it all depends. They could even be with, a, with another sibling. It doesn't matter, but it, once you put that caregiver hat on, Mm -hmm. and your LO is still alive, you're on call. You're like a physician who is on call for years or months or what decades, whatever it is. And I don't believe that non-caregivers understand that. So even if you see me out having a good time, I still, it's still there. I still, I'm looking at my phone and I don't think people get that. Yeah, my mother's gone two years, and I still think, wait, is that to, is that a call? It, like, it's the absence of that is still palpable, and it's been two yeah, years. So this is probably like a trauma. See, I haven't even, I haven't, I haven't transitioned to that to to know to speak to it. Right, still, you still have the trauma. Yeah, yeah. you have so. to recalibrate your brain. It's it's almost like PTSD, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, one thing I would want people to know is how I ended up treating my dad is because I noticed that we all have something in common. Aging. We all getting old. We all need help. We all need patience. Um, so it helped me to treat other people the same way. So I would say that it's something that we need to actually just like realize, like, don't you need help in some area? Like, so to have more patience with loved ones. And when you see a caregiver, I just want the same respect that y'all give Superman. All right. I want you to know that, yes, I have on a cape. Yes, I do. I do. I do. Yes. And then when you see me out and about, it's because I took it off real quick and I came in here to be with y'all. But this is a cape. This shit is some superhero shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's hard to do it. Fly in, swoop in, pick up shit, smile. <laughs> yes, this is my daddy. And even if you're going to, like, um, uh, I think Danny or whoever said it, even when they're still in the home, it's still the same thing. It's still a process. It's still something that you're doing. When you're taking the time out to care for somebody, you are literally a superhero. Um, And I think that is something huge that we overlook. Um, I think it is huge to know that everybody is aging. I don't give a damn how old you are. You're aging. You're getting older. Each day counts. Um, so it's just something that we need to have more patience with each other. Like, I feel like sometimes we be like, and it's like, oh, but that's a whole person. You know what I mean? Like, we just need to have patience and more understanding. And find your laughter. Life is hard, okay? It's nasty hard. I just want people to know that, like, it's some way to laugh at the end of this little nasty, shady tunnel. Like, it's a light, but it's some laugh right there. So that that is my biggest thing, like, if anything. And have some respect when you see a caregiver. Like, mm -hmm. oh, my God, is that super care? Yes, yeah, super caregiver. Super caregiver. Everybody back up, back up. No photos. That's it. Yeah, I think it's super important. I mean, I, the number one thing that everyone should take away today is it's okay to laugh. Please find the laughter, find the jokes. There's nothing, if, if the joke feels wrong, you need it still. Like just find <laughs> that laughter, find that humor. It's okay to laugh. I'm gonna wrap this up. I want to thank all of you ladies so much. You were all so amazing. I am in awe of the humor, of the intelligence, of the strength of everything.
Um, I'd like to congratulate everyone here for stepping up for yourself and showing up and giving yourself this space and this time and this moment. Uh, thank you everyone for spending your morning and afternoon with us. Please continue to stay connected to HFC by following us um, at We Are HFC or visiting HFC's website for information about caregiver support programs and resources at www.wearehfc.org. We encourage you to head over to the networking lounge to meet new friends and you can grow your support squad. And don't forget the photo booth because I hear it's a blast. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank to you, everyone. Caitlin. You are awesome. Great yeah, to meet awesome. you. Everyone's Caitlin awesome. She is a celebrity. Don't let her fool anybody. Oh my God. Yeah. It's big time. Thank you, everyone. I'm, I'm totally added to my bio that I was on the mic with Caitlin. So you might as well be ready for that. I thought it was just, I was like, I can't wait to put in my bio. I was on the show with Caitlin, <laughs> Jay, and Danny. I made it. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.